Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to Flatirons. It is 2018, New Year. Hope your resolutions are going well. Mine's going great so far. I made a resolution to not make any resolutions, so I'm going strong so far. Hope you are too. We've got a brand new series to kick off a brand new year. If you want more information, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Thanks for watching. Hey, Happy New Year. I haven't seen you. I miss you. Um, hey, I, I'm going to tell you this. So we're going to wrap up this, uh, this series we've been in for the last couple of weeks. But ever since uh, the weekend before Christmas weekend, I, I just wanted to rush through the holidays and stuff like that to get to this moment right here. This is one of those moments in the life uh, of, a, of, of a church where you go back and go, I was there. This is one of those. So grab some Kleenex and, and, and here we go. We, uh, so if you haven't been here, or maybe, maybe again, you made a wrong turn in traffic. You thought this was a mall. Welcome. And uh, so that's, that's okay. Right? But, so we've been in this series where, uh, called Take a Breath where we have intentionally not just plowed into 2018 like we do every January. Right? We hit the holidays and go, we go back to work and we go back to school. And, and the, the way we do it is because there's this list of things to do and there's this piles and stacks of, well, I need to work on that and I got to lose that. I got to get more of that. And I got to fix that. And I got to do better in this part of my life. Okay? Th those will be there next week. Okay? Just take a breath. Right? Right? So what, what we're trying to do, at least uh, up to today, wouldn't it be great if life had one of these, just to hit a magic like pause button and go, I, I don't have to do anything right now except sit and just be here. And that's all you have to do, okay? I'm not gonna ask you to do anything except to consider some things, all right? All I wanna do is I just wanna celebrate. I wanna celebrate, and, and there's two reasons I wanna do t t tonight, all right? The, the one is, and maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but I don't think I am. The first thing is, I really suck at celebrating. I'm really a horrible celebrant, and here's why. It's because anytime th something goes well in my life, in my job, in my career, with my wife, with my kids, with my friends, whatever that is, be because my life is so busy, the best I can muster is a high five, maybe a fist bump, and then go on. Because tomorrow's here, right? So, hey, good job, way to go there. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's move on, all right, right? So, I, 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 I'm really, I, I really stink at, at, at celebrating. The, the second thing is this, and Ben talked about this the first week, is a lot of times when we, we hit pause, what we tend to do is we look back on the past, and all we can remember, uh, here's the biggest things you remember about 2017, your epic failures, Right, the things you didn't do that you said you were going to do last January, all, all the, the mistakes you made. You know, we've been using this running a race metaphor. All the things that you said you were going to do and you did not finish. Like again, I don't think I'm the only one here. I, I, you're like me. I'm sorry, but you are. Meaning this is, you know, we talk a lot about the emails that we get here. Let me just say this: ninety nine point whatever percent of them are really good. Most of you are really good people. <laughs> all right, but I don't. You know what? I'll read and go. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That's encouraging. Thank you, thank you. And then I'll get that one. And you know who you are, right? You know, you get that one. And I don't think about the 99 when I lay in bed at night. I think about that one. Well, why, why, why does she think that? Or why does he think that? Why did he say that? It hurt my feelings. And I'm doing my best. And don't, like, you know, on and on and on and on. Does anybody else forget about the 99 and just think about the one mistake? It just, it just, it just hijacks our life. And so, so here, I'm not going to think about the one today. I'm going to think about the 99, all right? Because, because here's the truth. We've been looking at the last couple of weeks. 2018 is not a new beginning. We don't need a new start. We just need to keep going, all right? We just needed to keep going. And so the whole metaphor for the series is we decide to, you know, we run a race, whatever, you know, and we decide to pull over and just take a breath and get a drink of water. And next week, we'll start running again, but not tonight. Next week, we're going to run the race that some of us have been running. You know, we start following Jesus. Maybe, maybe Christmas was the first time you're here, and this is the second time you're here, right? And you said, I, I don't have it all figured out. I'm just trying to follow Jesus. Some of us, God's been doing some stuff in our life for months and years and decades you know, and you know what? So God started something else, and we're going to pick up, and we're going to keep on running, all right? But, but, but we're, we're gonna, this is what we're going to do for the next 30, 35 minutes, all right? We're going to look back, and we're going to give God all the credit and all the glory, but we're also going to acknowledge this, is that God uses people, when, when he says, here's what I want you to do, God uses people who go, I'm in. I'll do it. Yeah, use me. Here, here I am. I, don't, I have what I have. And so, so Scott started going, all right, I'm in. God gets all the credit, but he uses people. And if we boast, it's in, who, in, in what God has done. But God's MO, the way he operates is through people. So God is good, but here's what we keep coming back to. At Flatirons, you run good. And don't send me an email about incorrect grammar. I know. We run well. No, whatever. All right, shut up. All right, so, all right. so Flatirons, God is good, but you run good. You're following him really well. Right? We can talk about all the things we've done wrong last year, but you know what? We did some really good things. 
right? And then last week, it was so awesome, Scott came back to remind us that the reason that we have to kind of take a water break and take a breath, all right, is not because we kind of sit back and go, that's enough. We've done more than most. I mean, there's a lot more to do, but I'm tired, and just let somebody else do it, and I'm just going to stop here. That's not why we take a breath. That's not why we we sit back and, and, and reflect and celebrate, all right? No, no, no. The reason we take a breath is so that we can regroup and then recover so that we can what? Keep running, fixing our eyes and, and, and following Jesus. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to follow Jesus from this moment on because we, we, we're kind of back. We got our breath back. We, you know, we were, we're hydrated, right? And we're going to run down. We're going to follow him. He's the lead runner. I'm going to fix my eyes on his back. You set the pace, Jesus, and I will follow you. Whatever track you run down, whatever road you run down, whatever path you run down, wherever this life leads, I will follow you. And it's not just like we're on our own. You know, the, the Winter Olympics are getting to, come, you know, getting to start, and it's, it's to see all those people in the, in the big, you know, they march into the, the big arena, stuff like that. We have something better than that. What, what we looked at the last couple of weeks is that all of heaven, from Jesus all the way to my dad, are cheering us on. Don't quit. Don't give up. You made a mistake. You fell down. Get, get up. Now is not the time to, to give up and, and check out and, and do not finish. Just keep on going. I love how Scott brought it back to us last week. Hey, hey, no matter what you're facing in your life, finish. Finish the race, fight the fight, keep the faith. Let's say it together, one, two, three. Finish the race, fight the fight, keep, keep the faith. And then Ben talked about this, remember, is that sometimes when we're running the race and trying to do all that, we got stuff in our life that trips us up, right? It's that same old baggage, it's those memories, it's those addictions and things like that. So, so we have to, to kind of like, like trying to run a race with your, you know, all your, you know, your robes on, your winter coat on, something like that, and you throw all that stuff off. I don't want anything to... From, you know, it tripped me up in the past. It's not too going to do this from now on. And then Scott came back last week and he said, and you know what? We got to hold, we got to let go of the right things. But we we got to hold on to the right things too. Because we're not just running for health. Who does that? You know, who, right, right? We're, we're not running aimlessly because it's good for us. We're not running without a purpose. We're running towards a goal. We're fixing our eyes on Jesus and we're holding on to the most important things. And Flanders, the most important things are grace and truth. It's not either or, it's both. Jesus was full of both, Right? I want to run in such a way, I love how he said, I want to run in such a way that the grace and the truth that's been given to me, I'm running my race so I can give it to my kids and to my friends and to my neighbor, right? I receive grace. Anybody receive grace? Anybody receive forgiveness? Anybody receive truth from Jesus and it's making a difference in your life? So don't hoard it. All right, run your race and hand it off to the, to the next person. And like, 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 we, like we already talked about, next week we're going to start our fifth campus in Longmont. It blows my mind. I never thought we'd fill this room up, all right? But, but for the next month, we're not going to talk about what we're going to do in the future. For the next month, we're going to carve out and we're going to say, okay, this is, this is who we are and this is who we've been and this is where God's going to lead us in the future and in the seasons to come. Not just next year or 2018 or 2019, I mean from now on. And let me just give you, a, and we'll get back into this, okay, because you want to know the dollar amount. I know. Whatever. But uh, the question I'm going to ask over and over and over all the way through the end of February is not, so, so what do we need to do? Or what do we need to do better? Or what does the world need? Or what does God need to do? Those are important questions, all right? But the bottom line question we're gonna come back to is this. What do you wanna do? Because I'll be honest with you, I have a lot of things in my life I know I need to do. I need to stop doing some things. I need to start doing some things. I need to, uh, no, they're, not, they're none of your business. I need to change some things in my life. But you know what? I know I need to do them. You know what? I don't want to. So it doesn't really matter what God says needs to happen if we don't want to join him, right? So that's the next four weeks. But we're not going to do that today, okay? Today, you know what we're going to do? We're going to have a party. We're going to have a party. I hope you brought your dancing shoes because we're going to jump around and get stuff in our hair, all right? So uh, you, know, you know what? So, so this isn't, I was watching a YouTube video today of somebody who just hates flat irons. There are probably several out there. Anyway, you know, but, um, but there's other churches they can go to, and that's fine. So, but, so why, why are we going to have a party? Uh, yeah, email Scott, Nickel, at, right? Um, <laughs> hey, let me tell you why we're going to have a party tonight, okay? Because Jesus is amazing. He's amazing, all right? And, and he's leading the way. And, and, and you know what? And a lot of us, we have our eyes fixed on him. And we have our eyes fixed on amazing Jesus. You know what we do? We run really good. We do. We, we run good. And you know what? Here's what I'm really convinced of. Because I, I know the dollar amount. You don't. I know, right? And you go, you know what? It's, it's so good. You know what I want to do right now? I want to go, we should stop now. It doesn't get any better. We're just going to screw it up. Let's just stop now and go, remember that time when it was awesome, right? Uh, you know what? I think we're just getting warmed up because God's amazing. 
I do, all right? And when Jesus is amazing, and when we fix our eyes on Jesus and run after him, the world changes and people's lives change. You believe me? Because I'll show you. So out in the lobby of all four of our, of our campuses, all right, um, you, you'll see a table uh, with a car giveaway sign out there, all right? Um, so uh, you, you can get a ticket for a suggested donation of $25 a ticket, okay? Suggested. You can just hand them money and not get a ticket for the car, okay? Here, I don't care about the car. Here's some money, all right? I have to say this too. You can also ask for a ticket and not donate any money. But God might kill you. I'm just saying, all right? <laughs> I'm not saying he will, but it happened in, bo in the book of Acts, all right? Ananias and Sapphira, check it out, all right? They both dropped dead. So I'm not saying that will happen, but it's Christmas, all right? So, um, but you know, if you go up there and go, I just want a ticket for the car and I don't want to give you any money, they will give you one, all right? Now, we're going to do that this weekend at all our campuses. We're going to do that next weekend at all our campuses. After all, all those services are over, all the campuses, we get all those tickets together and bring them back. Then we're going to take a week off and then we're going to put them all together and then we're going to draw the winning ticket out uh, for, and somebody will win this VW, okay? But I don't really care about that. Here's what I'm really excited about, all right? Here's what we're going to do with all that money. 100% of the money that we make off of this VW, we're going to take it and we're going to buy cars. Hi, I'm Crystal. Um, I've been coming to Flatirons for a year and a half with my little boy. Uh, he's seven. His name is Tyler. Uh, I'm Chris. And I'm Adria. <laughs> this is our son, Jameson. We're the Blessed family. We've been going to Flatirons for about a year now. I do have a car right now. Um, I rely on it for school, for my son, and for me to work. I had a PT Cruiser that I got in Arizona. It, you know, just kind of trapped out on us, so we ended up having to strap that, and now we're down to our Subaru now, which is kind of kind of teetering, We've, it needs brakes and tires and has trouble starting sometimes. In the mornings when it's cold, there's no heater um, and it's really not a safe car for us to be in, especially when it's cold. So that's where our need comes in is we're, you know, we're, we've got a lot of distance to cover and don't really have the transportation to yeah. cover it. I just wanted to let everybody know that whether I get a car or not out of this, I'm looking for Crystal. I got a car for you. Like for real? Yeah, for real. You want it? And I'm always worried about taking them out in the in the horrible weather. Yeah. Excuse me, I I, I have a delivery. Somebody. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Christopher. Yeah. Adria. Yes. Hi, Jim. Hey. Hi, Merry Jim. Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jameson. Congratulations. That is amazing. You excited? Yeah. I am too. It's nice to meet you, bud. It's nice to meet you. I, I love watching your sermons. You're awesome, man. That's the right thing to say. That's the right <laughs> thing to say. Here's your car. Seriously? Seriously. <laughs> Jump in. Jump in. Do you want to check okay. it out, Jimmy? Do you want to check is it out? Is it what? You call him Jimmy? Yeah. Jimmy, Jameson, Jim. Uh, this is uh, Jimmy. They. I'm not saying they named him after me. <laughs> okay. All right, baby. Here, jump in there. Jump in oh, there. Oh, man. It's you. You matched the car. Oh, oh my, my God. gosh. Yeah? This is incredible. This is way more, oh my God. Yeah. That. Oh my gosh. Wow. You like it? Yeah, this is amazing. What? Come in and get it. This is, we'll get this in? is, wow. You wanna get in the back? This is not charity. This is not, uh, this is your church family. I want to remind you that um, you're not forgotten. This is God telling you how important you are. Because a lot of times it feels like um, you're forgotten, right? Yeah. The peace of mind with him out in the weather, yeah, it, it. It, it, it's, it's one of the biggest stress and anxiety things yeah. I had to deal with and yeah. ever since he was born. So this, it makes me feel so much better and it, I, I feel so relieved. Yeah. <laughs> this church has changed my life. Yeah. It seriously has. I came on one of your, the best days, Easter, that we did 2016, and I've yeah. not left. Yeah? Mm -mm. So we've never had yeah. a church that goes, does anything like this. Yeah. Sometimes people give people a car, and you go, now you're going to go get a license place for it, and they're going to give you the tax and the license and all that, and you're going to go, I don't have that. So we're going to cover that, too. Okay? Thank you so much, Flatirons. Flatirons family, thank you so much. This is the biggest act of community and family that I've ever been a part of in my life. I can't, I, I don't think I can, there's not language for this. Yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Jimmy, what do you think? thank you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs>
so good. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Slatter's way to go. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you so much. You run good. You run good. You want to know how much money you all raised? Okay, I'll tell you in a few minutes. All right, so before, <laughs> before I tell you that, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a preacher, so I got to teach a little bit. I, I, want to, I want to give you a little bit of teaching, all right, and then we'll get to it, all right, and then we'll all stand up and we'll dance and stuff like that. All right, but here, I want to teach you something f- for two reasons. One is I want you to, I'm not going to ask you to do anything. I want you to appreciate what God has just pulled off through you. I want to celebrate all right, so that we don't go, yeah, that's awesome, high five, February, right? right? I, don't, I just don't, I don't want to do that. So the first thing is I just want us to soak it in and, and not miss this moment. The second thing is what, what you all did for those last two weeks of December, it was spontaneous, all right? It, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't planned. I mean, I didn't have the idea until Tuesday, and we did it on Saturday. So this is just how I am, all right? This is why we couldn't get the gaming license, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, right? But, 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 so I, I'm, I think I'm pretty safe by saying this, is that no one, if you go back to those two weekends before Christmas, whether you came to one of the, the campuses or you, or you got online, all right? Nobody, like, got out of bed that day with this plan of, you know... Two weeks, you know, two weeks before Christmas, when I'm trying to figure out how to buy presents and pay for everything and get everything done that needs to get done, you know what? It seems like a good time. I think I'll rearrange my entire financial world in such a way that maybe there's a struggling family in the greater Denver area who might be able to buy a reliable car so they might find some hope. And remember that God is right here and he hasn't forgotten about them. You know, yeah, that, that, that's a good idea here in the middle of December. You know, in the most financially tight season of the year, I'm gonna go out to a big church somewhere in, in Denver, stand in a lobby surrounded by people I don't know, in a line for a long time to give money to people I don't know who have problems I don't understand. Nobody, nobody did that. Nobody thought about that. That is what you did, though, right? My question is, why? Why? And that's what I don't want us to miss, because I know why. I want to look at a, a letter. So the Bible, especially the last third of the Bible, it's a collection of letters, mostly, that a guy named Paul wrote to some people. And so we're going to be in the, uh, a letter called 2 Corinthians. It's written to some Christians who live in a town called Corinth. And the church that Paul's writing to, it reminds me of Flatirons. Okay? So you really could call it Second Flatironsian or something. I don't know. Anybody, if, we were, if we were a book in the Bible. Anyway. But anyway, these people in, in Corinth, all right, these Christians, they have found out that there's some people who follow Jesus too in another part of the country and, and it's, they're having a hard time because there's been a famine and a drought and they're starving to death and they're losing their homes and they're being overtaxed by the government and they're, and, and I started to make a government statement there and I'm not, I'm going to keep going. But anyway, you know, and, uh, and uh, uh, they're, 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 they can't feed their kids and something like that. And these, these people who live and go to this church in this town find out about some Christians who go to a church in that town and they do what you all did before Christmas. Hey, let's just pool our money and see what we come up with, right? And Paul's gonna write a letter to these people that are just like us for a couple reasons, all right? So, so here's what he writes in the first part of this letter. He says, so um, the people who are like starving over here in this town, um, really hurting, losing their family, losing their homes, losing their right, right? Um, they've heard about what you promised to do. They, they, they've heard words on the street that you're gonna help them. And the Bible uses the, the, the word, they're, uh, they're stirred up. Let me just translate it. You're blowing their mind. Who does that? right? They were ready to quit. They were ready to tap out. All they saw was more tunnel. They, they, they just thought nobody cares about us, all right? And listen, hey, Christians, they heard about what you're going to do, and they have a glimmer of hope for the very first time. So that's the, the first reason he's writing this letter to go, hey, they know, all right? The second reason, he says, I've been boasting about you. And, and not in an arrogant way, because he's boasting on what we're doing here, like what we're doing here. We're, our, our, we're boasting in the Lord, but the way the Lord, you know, works is that when people who claim to, you know, follow Jesus actually get up off their knees and go and actually go follow him. And he says, listen, I've been telling them about you and how faithful you are. And so I'm sending some leaders over there to get your gift to bring back to buy food for these people. So here's, the, here's what the letter's about. I just want to make sure you're going to deliver. All right? So they heard about it. They're, they have their hopes up and stuff like that. You promised them money. So when my guys get there, is there going to be any money? All right? Because if not, it's, it's going to get really awkward. And we've all been to that party. 
Jesus showed up on the wrong day. You, you ring the doorbell and go, hey, party. He went, yeah, it was last week. Oh, you're, you're right, right? Or you went in to get your raise or your bonus, and instead they gave you a jelly of the month. You know, that, that kind of thing. And you're going like, real, I was counting on that. But, but, but what Paul's saying is, this, listen, um, I just want to make sure because it's not like they're going to think bad about me or about you. They're going to make some assumptions based on Jesus. Oh, you people who follow Jesus, and the world does this every day today, you people who follow Jesus, who claim to be like Jesus, you don't keep your word, you make big promises, you say you're gonna help us and then you don't help at all, I'm not really interested in your Jesus, right? And so Paul writes this letter we're gonna look at, not, not as a pressure on them to give money or pressure on them to keep their promises, but to remind them of there's something going on more important on a spiritual level than just food. Like people's like salvation, their hearts, their souls hang in the balance. And so Jesus, uh, Paul does what Jesus does a lot. He uses a metaphor to connect dots for people going, so it's kind of like, like a farmer planting seeds. And he says, it's like if you take seeds and go put them in a garden, all right, if you, if you plant a little bit, you're gonna get a, lot, a little bit, and if you plant a lot, you're gonna get a lot. And so let me just give you the takeaway in case you had to leave early. Um, leverage and investing what you have now for something later that will bring greater returns. The spiritual life is kind of like planting corn. It's like a garden, okay? So in 2 Corinthians, there's free Bibles in the back. And if you don't want, just follow along and you can read this later if you want. All right, so he's writing this letter and he's been talking about all the stuff and, uh, that, he, that he's doing. And then he, he just gets to it, okay? So, and I'm gonna break this down like verse by verse. So it'd be, here's Paul, how Paul says that and here's how Jim says it, okay? And Paul's better. But anyway, so he says this. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly, not very much, will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let me just put that in gym language, all right? All right, so if you don't plant very many seeds, you won't harvest a very big crop. Does that make sense? But if you plant a whole lot of seeds, chances go way up that you'll actually get a big old crop. This isn't spiritual. This isn't theological. It's not philosophy. It's agriculture. Right? It's just math, all right? It's just, it's just so, so the spiritual life and reality, they work the same way, okay? So keep on going. So he's talking to Christians, all right? So each one, each one of you people who say you follow Jesus, you must give as you have decided in your heart. And he's talking about money. Give money as you've decided in your heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a, a cheerful giver. So let me just clear this up for everybody, okay? Christians, all right? Followers of Jesus. We don't give our money to the things of God, the things that God cares about, because some, uh, some obligatory rule, you have to if you're a Christian. That's not why we give money, right? Or some requirement in order to go to heaven that must be met. And you gotta do it whether you like it or not. Now, listen, Jesus never taught that. It's not in the Bible. There are a lot of churches that teach that. There are a lot of people trying to say, you know, if you'll give money, I can get your brother out of hell. I mean, they're, they're all over the place. If you'll do this, then, then things can happen. Jesus never taught that, okay? So let's keep on. All right, so, so the, the mark of a person who follows Jesus, and you'll know if this is you or not, is that your heart, right, what you love, agrees with the heart of Jesus, and it actually brings us joy to sacrifice what we have to give towards what Jesus want, wants to do. Does that make sense? It's not because you have to in order to get to heaven or have your sins forgiven. That's all being taken care of, all right? My heart lines up with Jesus. So Paul writes this, okay? So, all right, so, uh, and God, God is able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency, that's enough of everything, in all things, at all times, you may abound in every good work. So God's able, but God's not just able. God's gonna make us a promise. Listen to this, right? God promises to supply all the grace and all the strength that you need in how many things? In all the parts of your life. Seek first the kingdom of God. And all these things that you need. He says, I'm going to take care of you, all right? In all things, at all times, as you leverage what you have to partner with God in the good works that he wants to do. He promises, I'll cover you. You just line your heart up with me. I've got you. And then Paul goes on. He says, as it is written, he, and I'm just going to kind of translate as I go here, God has distributed freely. So he has given to the poor. So God says, I, I'm in charge of everything. I've given, I've given money like this. Now I want you to give to the poor. Because I'm going to take care of the poor. 
His righteousness, God's righteousness endures forever. He, God, who supplies, let's translate, the metaphors coming back together here about sowing and, and what we're doing, okay? God who supplies seed, and we're not talking about seed, we're talking about money. So God who gives money to the sower, that's you the last two weeks of December. I don't know what he's giving you this week, but the last two weeks you coughed it up. Um, whatever, all right? He gave you seed and bread for food. This is what God promises. He'll supply and multiply your seed. Whatever your financial investment that you sow into what God wants to do, he says, I'll increase the harvest of your what? Now, this is really, really important, okay? So let me just, you need to change the channel on TV a lot more often, all right? There's no promise in the Bible and there's no promise from God that if you give him 10, he'll give you 100. It's not true. If you'll do this, God will take away your cancer. It's not in the Bible. What he says is, listen, you, sow, you line your heart up with me and run after the hearts of the, uh, uh, things that I love, and here's what I promise. You and I will be right, we'll be good. You're not buying your way in. I'm telling you, when your heart lines up with mine, I'll, I'll take care of you. I'm gonna make a big statement, okay? It's like, like I'm gonna take a picture of that because I'm gonna use this against him later, but it, this is just true because Jesus taught it. The most effective path to grow spiritually is to trust and invest your money in what God's doing, says Jesus. All right? You gotta listen to that, okay? The most effective path to grow spiritually. Everyone says, how many people said in January? And you know what? This isn't a giving talk. It's not a money talk. I'm not gonna ask you to do anything different. You've already just blown my mind, okay? I just wanna celebrate that, right? But Jesus said over and over and over, if you want to grow spiritually, and how many of us said this year, this year I wanna get closer to God. You know what Jesus would go? Then point your money towards the things I love, and, and you'll take off. I, I, I was listening, uh, so uh, several years ago, uh, a guy named Bono, maybe you've heard of him, all right, uh, he can sing, and, uh, but, and I, this is not a statement on Bono, and I don't know what his life is with Jesus, or if he's a Christian, or whatever, I don't, I don't know, but he was asked to speak at the National Prayer Breakfast in Washington, D.C., and he said something that is so wise and countercultural, I actually thought he stole that from a philosopher or Jesus. or I mean, it's that, it's that good. But he's speaking to all these Christians in the power center of the world. And here's what Bono said. He said, stop asking God to bless what you're doing. Find out what God's doing. It's already blessed. I don't do that. You know what I do? I do what I want to do. I invest my money and my time and this is really cool and stuff like that. And then I have an afterthought. I should probably get God on board with this. God, will you join me when I'm doing over here, I'm doing it with or without you. Will you bless my plans? Instead, I've never, ever gone, hey, I'm gonna look around and find what God's doing, and I'm just gonna go join him over there because it's already blessed. Jesus says this. This is Jesus. All right. And this isn't a money talk. I'm actually celebrating that I think we're getting it. That's all I'm doing. Jesus points out that, that how and what you spend your money on not only indicates what you love and who you love the most, it also indicates who you believe will take care of you the best, God or money. Just look at my bank statement. He also says the biggest obstacle to most people growing spiritually is because they won't let go of their money because they think, you know what? If God doesn't show up, I'll have to hold back enough money and that way I'll be happy and I'll be secure and I'll be safe, although it's never happened. You know how I know that's true? Because you're having a conversation with me in your head right now. Because you know, because I'm quoting Jesus, I'm speaking the truth. But here's the conversation in your head. In order to be safe, I probably should give my money to, to more things around the world, but um, I gotta hold on to it because I'm not sure Jesus is really gonna show up for me. Even though Jesus says, trust me and seek me first and I will take care of the rest. But you're sitting here, and here's the tug of war going on in your heart right now. Do I have to look out for myself? Can I have enough money that no matter what happens to me or my family will be okay? Or do I trust Jesus? Go with trust Jesus. Why? Because on your own, it's impossible to take care of your life and your family and to shore up all the things that could go wrong. But with God, let's say it together, one, two, three, all things are possible. It might be wise to just go with God, okay? Let's keep on going back to this letter, okay? All right, I'm getting to the number. It's worth the wait, shut up. All right, so, all right. so Paul says this, you will be enriched, all right, in every way. So you will be like, poured out even more riches in every way. Why? To be generous in every way. God says, I'm gonna give you so much so that you can give it away in every way, which through us, all right, will provide thanksgiving. So we're gonna come pick up the money 
And then we're going to take it to some people, and it's going to produce thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying, let's just bring it to Flatirons. So the, so, so the money you gave is not just supplying the needs of the saints. It's not just buying cars for people who really, really need them. It is also overflowing in many thanksgiving to God. Who's saying thanksgiving? Who's saying thank you to God? Those who have been helped. Did you just watch the video? And just wait, get the Kleenex. There's another one, I'm telling you. It's just, gonna, it's, it's just heartbreaking, all right? It says this, by their approval of this service, and, and you just saw it in the video, all right? What? How many, I, I lost it. Who does this? Who, who cares? These people don't even know me, but by their approval of this service, someone was willing to help me. Here's the response. They'll glorify God because of your submission. What's submission mean? You didn't just say you believe it, you obeyed, and, you, and your belief lined up with actions, all right? And it comes from your confession of the gospel. You're living out the confession of the gospel of Christ. And here's the, the gospel of Christ. God is near and is available to everybody right now. That, that mom, whose little boy was climbing over the seats, all right, which I love, and he's, and he's in our circle of friends class right now, right? And that, that little, 20 and 21, And the generosity of your, of your contribution for them and for all the others, while they long for you, and so many times, they, they just tell them thank you, all right? And they pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God upon you. And here, Paul lands the plane. Thanks be to God for who? His inexpressible gift. Thanks be to who? Yeah. So you know what? I, I hear this a lot. Hey, thank, thank you, flat irons. You know, it's not flat irons. It's, it's not you. Thank you, Corinth, it, it's not Corinth. And you know what, I'm in the video and I get the hugs and stuff like that, right? Thank you, it's not Pastor Jim, all right? Here's what we have, this is what humbles all of us. It goes like this, thanks be to God for his gift. And here's how all the people I talked to last week would finish this, and which I don't have a category for. Nor can I express what, what this means, because I, I don't, it's just really my car. You know, all three interviews last week, um, every person said some version of the same thing. Sometime we, we were talking to them, and uh, it, I mean, so, so some of us have been here. Do you, do you know that? Mo so I used to, I, when I was, uh, I had two babies living in Lexington, and uh, my friend Tim was in grad school, and he won a car on the $10,000 pyramid, and he put uh, 250,000 miles on it and gave it to me, and uh, it was a Ford Fiesta, <laughs> all right, and so... Um, and I was grateful until I was driving my babies over to the babysitter's house, and I realized it was foggy outside, but it wasn't foggy outside. My car was filling up with exhaust. And you know what I felt in the worst, in that moment? Like I'm the worst dad ever. We're gonna look at a couple in a minute where he whispered in my ear, Jim, it would be better if I just died. Everyone somewhere in the, when I'm talking to them, and they all showed up at church thinking they were just being interviewed. They had no idea I was gonna drive through the lobby, which is awesome. All right, but anyway, but um, <laughs> everyone said something like this. I was at a point where I thought, I'm done. I'm tapping out. And where's God? Anybody been there? I don't know if I can do this anymore. And then when I told them, you know what? This is not charity. This is not pity. This isn't welfare. This is just God reminding you that he hasn't forgotten about you and that he loves you. And you're important, and he's just using flat irons, your church, to deliver this message. And, and you know, they all said, I, I, I've never seen this before. I've never experienced this before. I didn't know churches do this. And you know what I said to him quietly off camera? Not very many do. But that's why we're here, because that's what Jesus wants to do. Hey, flat irons, you run good. And this series is called Take a Breath. But let me just tell you really quick before we, I'll give you the number, all right? Um, this isn't figuratively. You literally breathe life into some people who thought, I, I probably, I'm not gonna make it till tomorrow. So you wanna know the number, right? So when I, when I had this idea, um, I'm gonna talk some more. Uh, so when I had this idea about selling the VW, okay? So I was talking to Joe, and I was talking to Adam, some different guys, and I'm like, you know what? If we could raffle, not, not raffle, sorry. Uh, if we could, if we could, whatever that is that we did, all right? You know, if 25, or if, if 1,000 people gave $25, we could raise 20, $25,000, and at $7,000 a car, plus we're holding back $500 for taxes and licenses like that, that's like, I don't know, three, three cars. We could give three, we could change three families, all right? But, so I said 25,000. Whenever I talk to people, I'm going, maybe we might make 25,000. But you know what? In the back of my mind, I'm going 50. 
I want 50. But you don't say it out loud because then you only get 40, you say like, well, it's not 50. But you know, whatever that is, all right? Um, and so in the back of my mind, I'm going, I hope it's 50, I hope it's 50, I hope it's 50. And uh, apparently I don't have much faith in God or you. So I will tell you the number on one condition, all right? You've got to hold on to it because we have more services later this, this weekend, all right? And don't rob them. Don't post it on Facebook or tweet, tweet, don't tweet it. Just don't. Tomorrow, you know, Monday, something like that, okay? So, so don't tell anybody. And I, God knows who you are. He knows where you live, all right? Uh, what it is. So yeah, I'm going to give you this number, and then we're going we're gonna to sing. Just stand, let's stand up because you're going to stand up anyway, okay? All right? So you ready? I've been waiting for this. Um, so because of the abund- abundance of grace that you've experienced from Jesus that you want to go and actually sow abundantly in, into people's lives, hey, this is what you gave. I was hoping for 25. And you blew that away. And I was hoping for 50. And you blew it away. And then I heard it was like 100 and you didn't stop. And then I thought 150. And then I thought, wow. Flatterns, because of your understanding of grace and how good God is. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, sitting right. Sitting right. There we go. 404,922 dollars. Yeah. Woo. Come on. Awesome, awesome. Go ahead, go ahead and see. Um, that's just good. Um, so um, this is why I said you got to be here. There are moments in the life of this church. If you go back about eight, nine years ago, we laid a carpet out 
And we gave money for a well in Afghanistan, and we changed, we're a different church after that. And then the, uh, we put money in a clear box. Some of us were here to help a family. We remodeled a mobile home for a son who was really, really, really sick. And then there was an earthquake in Haiti, and we put money in there. And you know, we, we talked about how $1 can't change anybody's life, but if all of us put $1 in a box, we could change the world. The four, 400, and this is 404, it's the largest offering we've ever received in the history of, of this church. And listen, with that number, it's not six, well, it's be six Mercedes. I, we're not doing that. Um, <laughs> so we're looking at somewhere between 50 and 60 cars that we're going to give away in the next month. <laughs> well, here, here's the other thing. So if somebody won the VW, all right, so Jeff, Jeff Craze, uh, he's a local realtor, he won, the, he won the VW, and he talked to his family and said, we don't need, it. We don't need that, and so they gave it back and, uh, and said, so when you run out of cars, give it to the next family on the list, but you, listen, I'm not going to put babies in a 74 VW, I'm just not going to do it, and so if you want to buy that, uh, it'll be on Craigslist tomorrow or see me, it's $20,000, and so uh, uh, just take the moment in. All right, um, let, me, let me land this plane. So, so next week, um, we're going to see how everything we talked about this week plays into where we're going as individuals because you, this changes a person and it changes a church. And we're going to move into the future and we're going to ask this question, whatever needs to happen or whatever God wants to do in this world, all right, the question is, do I want to do that? Do I want to be a part of something like, like, like this? And again, let's go back to this. I don't mean to take away any of, of, of it uh, at all, right? The car giveaway and let's help some hurting families around Christmas. We all did that like on a whim. Just like, I never thought of that. Okay, I'm, I'm in. And you gave almost half a million dollars. Think, think about this, all right? We emotionally responded to a really good ask towards something that lined up and connected with your heart. You sat in this room or you sat in another campus and you said, you know what? That makes sense. That's worth giving to. I, could, I actually could think I made a difference in the world, and so you gave. Let me say it on a, like a fancier level. How about this? You caught a vision, all right? And an hour before this, you, you weren't paying attention to it, some of us, all right? You caught a vision, and you gave money towards something because your heart lined up with what God's heart cares about, and then you intentionally decided to rearrange things and do something different. But what if, what if you caught a vision that's worth intentionally adjusting from now till your funeral, all the most important parts of your life. And these are the most important parts of your life. You don't have enough time, you don't have enough talent, you don't have enough money. But what if you said, this is so important, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna point in a direction and it's not just the latest emotional thing that catches my eye. I'm not saying anything wrong with that. I'm just saying, what if your vision, what if you had a vision for your life where you're, the entire culture of your life was focused on something so compelling, so big, so important, that just the, the normal thing that comes out of you, and then when we all come together, the, the thing that comes out of, out of a church like this is, of course we help families. Of course we, we leverage everything we, we can every day to help people know that God has not forgotten about them and that he loves them and that they're important and no matter what you've done, he doesn't hate you. He loves you. And there is light at the end of the tunnel. And no matter how bad your life is, there is hope. What if we leveraged everything in our lives so people would know that? What if you actually believe that, the God, that God could continue to use you to do something like we just did at Christmas? But let's just don't do it in the holidays or around Easter or feed people at Thanksgiving, all right? But could use me to make a difference in this world from this day until I die. But how about going back to the whole, you know, baton analogy, like why, why does it have to stop when I die? What could I do something so important in this life that after I'm dead, the effects of it go on and on and on and on for generations to come? What if every day of our life from now on, you knew God was using you to change the world and change really, really, really important people, using you to do things like this? If a good, safe car would be a game changer for you and your family to help in a really hard season of life, or if a, if a good, safe car would serve as a reminder that God has not forgotten about you, and there's this place called Flatirons, it's made up of people who get up off their knees and follow Jesus, we want to be an answer to your prayer. If that's you, then get online at flatironschurch.com slash car, fill out that form, and then we'll go through that, and if you qualify... We are going to give you a car and some car seats or whatever you need until we run out of cars, which all depends upon how many donations we get this weekend and next weekend. So when you walk out of here, you say, I don't know how to help somebody this Christmas. There you go. 
All right, now we're gonna make a difference in some people's lives. I'll come back, I'll come back in the first of the year and we'll tell you, start telling the stories about, about the, the family's lives that, that you changed because they are praying right now. They don't, have, they don't have money for Christmas. God, I need you to do something impossible in my life. I can't even have a job unless I can drive to my job. I can't, I, this could change my life. I don't know how you would ever do this, God. And you're the answer. I'm Chris. I'm Kayla. And this is Nevaeh, our daughter. We've been going to Flatirons for about 12 years since I was in middle school, so. I got hurt on a job, and I lost my job, and I got really sick. Sometimes I can't drive because I'm so sick. And then there was the car we had, the engine blew up and we were living out of a car. Don't have that anymore, because it couldn't even stay warm, because it couldn't start the engine. And now we're periodically staying, you know, couch surfing. And the car we're using right now is just his mom's for right now, so I could go to work and do what we gotta do, so. And get her daughter to school, I gotta try and get yeah. her started this year. Oh, about, I had about 17 surgeries since 99. My last one was cancer on my head. They thought they got it all. And like a PET scan came back messed up recently. And now I gotta go have a biopsy of my stomach on Friday, a week from today. Yeah, I, I got awesome. doctor's appointments like crazy. Well, she really, doesn't have a license yet. Yeah, it will really help us out too because um, right now, you know, that's what I'm saving for is a car. And then look for a place, hopefully. So that would really help us out because we could just concentrate on finding a place to finally call home. It would be really nice. A bed for our daughter, but. If we did get the car, Oh gosh, um, I don't even know how to put it in words of how much it will help. It will put a lot less stress on me, I know on him as well, and... Be reminded that there is still really good people out there, no matter how bad the world has been. And it shows me that God's there for us, that he hasn't forgotten us. Mm -hmm. To leave us hope. Keep going. There's a reason why we're going through what we're going through, too. So. Because right now we don't have much hope at all. I don't think any. Hey, I have a special Christmas delivery for Chris and Kayla. Are they here? Here we go. Hey! Merry Christmas. Hey, sweetie. You all right? It's a good day, huh? Sorry. Yeah. Hey, you want this? I should let her drive. All right. I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize. I'm Jim. I uh, know. Yeah? Oh, oh, you got a wire on it. Be careful. I don't know where it is. Man. Oh, thank you. Hey. Merry Christmas. Okay. How you doing? Good now. Good now? Looks like you got something good here, huh, babe? <laughs> oh, no. oh, dear. Is this really happening? This is really happening. Y'all climb in there. So, uh, so. Oh my God. So when we had this idea back in December, all we were hoping to do is just give some people some hope. Because a lot of times when life gets overwhelming, you just feel like you're on your own, right? And kind of <laughs> forgot. A long time. Yeah. Well, this is a message from God through Flatirons, which is your church, is that you're not forgotten and you're really important and you're loved. And this is just uh, one way that 
We want to encourage y'all right now for hanging in there and keeping going even when life's tough, all right? Merry Christmas. And, uh, God bless all of you. <laughs> Everybody is just amazing. If I could, I'd hug every single one of you. I can't even talk. <laughs> and just let this be a reminder to you that you're not alone, all right? You got a family, you, and you got a, you got a church, and, uh, and a church that we want to be the kind of church that actually takes care of people, okay? And so we'll walk through that with you too. We'll walk through the car thing with you, we'll walk through the cancer thing with you, um, because that's what family does, right? This is just too amazing, I can't believe it. I told you to get Kleenex. Uh, um, did you hear what he said? This is a dream. Um, so Kayla said she couldn't talk, but then she wrote me this email. Um, I want to say something now that I can talk. Just say something to the church. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, Chris and Kayla, are you here tonight? He might be sick. They're driving that car. <laughs> I hope so. Um, thank you all so much for your kind hearts for making this possible for our family. With this car, we can finally concentrate on finding a place. Go back to when you were 20. You finally um, call home, and my husband can have a comfortable place on the days that he's sick to be able to finally relax and make it so much easier to give our daughter her own room and a real bed to sleep in. I wanted to say to, I love her, I wanted to say to people that are going through a hard time and asking why, here's what she said, just hang in there and remember that God is there and he is there even when it feels like he isn't there. Please just hang in there and don't give up because tomorrow could be the best day of your life. We lost our home and my husband lost his job and health all in a very short time. Then by the grace of God, we got a car in seconds so you never know what can happen. We're so grateful for this church and everything it stands for. This church is amazing. You run good. And God is good. And you listen, you're not just buying cars and buying food and putting people in, 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 in school and, and helping people make their, 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 their ends meet. All right, no, no. You know what? Let's go, let's go bigger and higher. Flatters, you're actually answering prayers. That's what, how God does it. He answers it through his people. Let's go even higher. So the whole goal is to become the kind of people that Jesus is, right? Hey, Flatterns, some of us are connecting the dots. You're becoming Jesus with skin on, the Jesus that the world has been waiting on for a long time. I don't know what you want to do with your life. I don't know what, if you have, a, have decades left or minutes left. I don't know. I don't know. But I do know there are some things that Jesus says need to happen and that he wants to do in the lives of some people that he loves. Okay, I'll just speak for myself. I want to be the kind of person, and then I want to belong to the kind of church that just gives cars away and gives food away and helps people get back up and carries them if they need to be carried so they can catch a breath and then they can get back on their feet and start running. I wanna be a part of a church that when people look at it, they go, I don't know, I'm not really religious, but that church, if it's anything like Jesus, I wanna find out more. And I, listen, I'm gonna make a bold statement. I think we have a shot. If we'll keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, we could become that church that reminds people of Jesus, I believe it. it. We have to make a choice though. Is that what we really wanna do? I do. I just wanna stop playing and just go for it. And so that's what we're gonna talk about for the next month. What, what would that look like? And the biggest question is, it doesn't matter what it looked like. Do you, do you wanna do it with us? Do you wanna go there? Everybody stand up. All right. Repeat after me. We run good. Because God is good. So take a breath and then come back in here next week and let's just run, let's run towards Jesus. Amen? Yeah. So, Father, um, thank you. My heart is just overwhelmed with gratitude. I, I lift up uh, Chris. I, I pray that he went to the doctor Friday and the cancer was gone. But if that was not what happened, then we'll walk through that with him and we'll walk through 
all the sickness and all the homelessness and all the poverty and all the cancer and all the car wrecks and all the divorce and all the things that we just look around and go, that's my life. We were never supposed to do them on our own. We're supposed to do them linked arms with some other people who say, I- I'm just running after Jesus, so come on, run with me. I wanna be a part of a church like that. I would leverage every talent, every dollar, every, every minute that I have left if at the end of, of my life I could look back and go, the world's different and better because I told Jesus I was in. I wanna be a part of that. So God, bless those 50 families that have no idea what you're about to do in their life. And all the credit and all the glory goes to you. You're amazing, Jesus. In your name I pray, amen.